Yeah, welcome. Uh, lecture 19 is in our course Introduction to Order Theory. Uh, last time we've been talking about uh, diagrams and uh, the chromatic number or cover graphs uh, and the chromatic number of them and we saw that they exist uh, cover graphs with chromatic number in the range of n to the 1 over 4. Um, at the end of, of the last lecture I was I was mentioning that you can that you can go on special classes on of orders and look for the behavior of the chromatic number of the diagram of the cover graph there. And this is what we are going to do today. We look at two dimensional orders and their cover graph. And uh, so, you know, the, a very natural order to look at is we take we take p as a set of n random points, in the unit square. So this is our this is our uh, partial order, and it will turn out that this is already a partial order where the cover graph has large chromatic number. And um, yeah, so wh what kind of partial order do we get here? We have the we have the points, uh, and and with these points we get we get. Uh, the partial order relation, which says that everybody who is in the in the first and in the third quadrant of a point is comparable. And uh, if you if you take this as a definition of the order, then you see that the the edges in the uh, diagram are exactly the empty empty rectangles. These are these are edges of the cover graph, always with the edge going, going this direction. Okay, um, so it, we, we are going to talk about empty rectangles. Uh, empty rectangles in general can also be of, of that kind, but this is not an edge in the, in the cover graph. Okay, so um, we begin by Assuming so, uh, the points have x coordinate and y coordinate. X i y i is point p i, and we assume that the uh, label is such that the x coordinates are sorted increasingly. And uh, now the the cool idea in the proof is that we are going to disclose. The, the y coordinates uh, iteratively, we are going to refine the, uh, the knowledge about the y coordinates step by step. So um, if, we, if we look at yi, then we can write this as a in a in a, in, with digits, di1, di2, di3, and so on, maybe an infinite sequence of, of digits. And here is something, something uh, important. Uh, we use base L. And this L will, will be uh, some, something that we disclose later. We'll, we'll at the very end of the proof, we fix the L. But um, yeah, so this is the, the base, and then then we we have certain truncation of this. So uh, at time t or the t truncation of this number is when you take when you take just the first t digits of it. Yeah, and then we speak about about faces in our 
in, in the presentation of this of this partial order and in, in stage at stage T the uh, digit DIT is disclosed for all I. So you get one one additional piece of information about about your your numbers. And uh, well, an easy observation is that when when we have uh, y i t is not equal to y j t, then we know that uh, <coughs> we know the order of y i and y j, meaning that we know whether yi is greater than yj or the other way around. As soon as for the first time they are distinguished, they remain distinguished and we know the order. Yeah, and uh, now we, we, we look at the rectangles and we say that a rectangle IJ is forced at stage T if YI YIT equals YJT um, yes, we we assume that i is less than j, so this should hold. And moreover, for everybody who is sitting in between, we already know that he is outside. So uh, y k t is not equal to y i t for all uh, I S and J. So they are known to be to be outside of the of the rectangle. Um, now this is rectangle. This could be of this of this type. Um, yeah. And uh, so, so two remarks. The first one is um, a rectangle is uh, corresponds. an edge with probability one half. Yeah, so uh, that's it. <coughs> when we when we see a rectangle being forced, we, we don't yet know whether it's an an edge or it's of the of the other type. And the decision is equally likely. And a second thing is that um, that the cover graph of P may contain many edges which are uh, not related to force rectangles. So uh, yeah, 
say say at, at some sometime uh, in the in the game the three the three coordinates are together and at the the next stage we we see we see something something like this then uh, and this will maybe a rectangle which which is or even an edge which is uh, surviving but it's it's not it's not forced at this stage here it's not yet forced and here it's not forced uh, yeah so just for but but the uh, edges which come from forced rectangles will be enough to show that the independent set in in this uh, cover graph is small, the maximal independent set, so the chromatic number is high. Okay, now uh, now we take take a subset of n, and we want to bound the probability that this is going to evolve into a independent set. Uh, one upper bound for the probability that uh, that the, the points with i in i are independent. of dp. This probability we, we want to study. And uh, to do so, we define, we define a, sub, a set h y. So this is, uh, this is a set of i in n with the property that at time t minus 1, uh, the coordinates are equal to, to y. And we do this for every y which has a, has a base L representation of the given length. And uh, yeah, so this is, these are the sets and then within uh, these sets we, we talk about neighbors. These are consecutive elements of I in HY. And uh, now if, if I less than J and, and they are neighbors, then we define the Sij to be to be the the set of all k with i less than k less than j and uh, k is in hj um, neighbors. In Hj, so the three i, j, and k all belong to the same Hj, and uh, and then, then we we need close neighbors, and this is uh, neighbors where this set is not too big. Sij is upper bounded by L. This is a close neighbor. So maybe maybe it's a good idea to uh, to make a picture of of this equation.
So we have our we have our square, and we know we know the positions uh, in x, and we have some we have some set i where we focus on. These are some some points here, and then we have some depending depending on the t we have. We have some some knowledge about the about the y coordinates. So uh, I I put the points on on these lines, and, and this tells us if, if a point is on this line, then we know that it will end up in the strip. And uh, yeah, so we see we see red points. Uh, and white points, and this is some um, example of a of such an H H J, and and then the being close depends on how many how many white points we see between the two. Yeah, in the on this line. So this might be an example which is not close. Too many guys in here. Uh, yeah. So this is this is uh, the the picture we we keep in mind. And now here is uh, we look at I J close neighbors. And now. The probability that uh, i and j uh, the, the rectangle i j is forced at stage at stage t. So we are in the situation that we know that it up to t minus one. So maybe maybe I should uh, correct this here. And now the, we go to stage t. We disclose another digit, and we ask ourselves what is the probability that uh, that the rectangle is forced, meaning that the two i and uh, j the t digit is the same, but for everybody in between. Uh, it's different. So, for the two to be, the, let's fix the digit of i, then the probability that the digit of the t's digit of j is the same as one over l, and um, for all the others we need the event with which has probability one minus uh, one over l, and the number of guys we have there is as i j. So this is the probability, and now because these numbers are smaller than one, then this is uh, at least as large as one over l one minus one over l. We have an upper bound on on the size of these sets for close neighbors, so we get this, and uh, and this is at least 1 over 4L which comes from which comes from a known uh, property of this function 1 minus 1 over x to the x uh, is going from below to 1 over e and um, and 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 yeah, so it's going from below there, so it's in, in the range we are interested in, it is above 1 minus 1 over 2, uh, 2 squared, which is equal to 1 over 4. So this is, this is where this 4 comes from. And, and these are 
known approximations of of E. Yeah. So uh, this is the probability that the rectangle is forced at stage T, and then the probability that it evolves into an edge is one half of this. Okay. Uh, now uh, we need we need another definition. We say that. We say that the independent the set I survives stage T if uh, if there is no no edge forced at stage T. So uh, I survives stage T if no edge uh, appears at stage T. And maybe I, I say something about edge appears. This is a rectangle force plus uh, plus the one half probability or times the pro one half probability. Um, yeah, this is when an edge appears. Now, now let's see what is the probability that I survive T given a previous stages. Well, uh, this is this is equal to saying that uh, for all close neighbors, they are not forming an edge, and uh, this is just the definition. Uh, no edge appears at stage T. Um, we are only looking at forced rectangles. Um, and what is a forced rectangle? This was exactly uh, the this, this thing that you have a, a close neighbor and, and everything in between is moving out. That was uh, really for only for close neighbors? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Rectangle can only be forced. Uh, you mean here is a close. Yep. You're, you're right. It's not only close neighbors. It's oh, to have equality here. We it's about neighbors. Uh, and now, now we uh, restrict. We restrict the focus on a subset of these uh, candidates, and we say that this is when we go on a subset, and the probability uh, is is going. Yeah, the, the probability that all these are not edges is is more than. The probability that a subset of candidates is is not uh, not an edge. So we say that for all uh, e n n, it's not not an edge. I'm going to talk about this n in a in a second, or maybe maybe I I put it here. Uh, n a set of close neighbors. So here, here the close comes in and uh, we additionally want that the, these uh, neighbors have pairwise disjoint ends in the 
set i. So you use a point of i only for for one of these uh, pairs, and using a point only once implies that the the outcome uh, outcome whether a rectangle forms an edge is independent. You know, this this uh, you can for each of these for these uh, pairs it can it. it evolves into an edge with probability one half. Okay, and, and with this independence, we can we can uh, convert this in a in a product. So it's now the product over the pairs i j in n, and here we have one minus the probability that uh, i j forms an edge. And now, now these are closed neighbors and the probability for a closed neighbors that they form an edge is already is already determined. They so have to form a rectangle and then we have probability one half that they form an edge. So uh, so this is less equal 1 minus 1 over 8L to the size of n. And now we introduce a letter for the size of n. This is m. And now, uh, now here we again have something which comes, which comes uh, close to what we have here, we can think of this as being um, 1 minus 1 over 8L to the 8L times something. And then the first part is going to be 1 over E, and the something uh, remains in the exponent. So uh, we get this is E to the minus M over 8L. This is a subset. Um, yeah. Now, the next question we are going to address is how big can uh, can can we choose M? Um, so we want to we want to choose a set of close neighbors with this property. So we have to estimate the, the numbers. Uh, you can, uh, if you have connection problems, your video resolution is so low that I can't see what is being written on the board. Uh, yeah, sorry. Question, how large can M be made? So let's, let's get back to this, to this picture. Every, every I in I is a red point. It's sitting on one of these, of these lines. Um, and on these lines, we have we have neighbors. So only only the last red point on each line fails to have an interval. Yeah. So uh, all but last element of I on HJ have a right neighbor. And, uh, and another thing is 
that um, if they are not close, then in between we have more than L guys. In total we have N or N minus I, but let's stick to N. So uh, there can only be N over L many pairs which are not close. Only N over L pairs are not close. So the, the number of close neighbors is at least as big as well we take we take i uh, we subtract the pairs which are not close this is minus n over l and then we subtract one for each of the hj how many do we have well uh, we we have disclosed t minus one uh, digits so the number of lines we see here is L to the T minus 1. Yeah. Uh, so these are the clays close neighbors and now uh, take every second and they are pairwise. So, so what we what we get here is that the m is at least as big as one half of size of i minus n over l minus l to the t minus one. So. Uh, to, to explain this again, so we have we have the close neighbors that <coughs> that many, and they form paths on these lines. So on each of the of the lines, we have we have certain we have some paths, and and from each path, we can take at least one half of the of the intervals. If it's even, it's exactly one half. If it's odd, we can even get a bit more. So this is for this is safe. Okay. So this is something to keep in mind. Maybe maybe I put it here again. Size of i minus n over l minus n to the t minus one. And now I can, I can erase this board and continue here. Okay, uh, now let's, let's make assumptions. So, uh, first assumption is on T. We don't want T to be too big, so we want T to be bounded by log N over log L. And, uh, and we want I to be large, we want I to be at least 4N over L. And now, uh, now with these assumptions, we see that uh, L to the T minus 1 is equal to 2 to the log L. Uh, now we plug in, uh, well, T minus 1. Now we plug in the, the T, and so this is upper bounded by log L. And, uh, and then we have log n over log l minus log l. 
and there is a nice cancellation, and we have 2 to the n minus log L, so this is equal to n over L, so not too big. And uh, yeah, so if we if we plug this in here, we start with 4 n over L and we subtract n over L and we subtract another n minus L so we still have 2 n over L and we take one half it's so <coughs> so what we get is m is at least n over L yeah and uh, and now we we go back to to our our probability stuff, and and we find that the probability that I survives survives uh, stage T so this is at most. Uh, e to the n 8 l squared and the minus sign. Uh, and here we have previous stages. We can also put there the assumption that it has survived all the previous stages. This is uh, not, not changing the, uh, the thing. And, and then we can and we can iterate and we find that the probability that I survives the first T stages is upper bounded by E to the minus N T over 8 L squared. Good. This is something. This is something to keep. And now, so far we have been looking at at one eye. Now we look at at, at uh, many eyes. And um, so. Yeah, we don't we don't need this anymore. Yeah. Now we look at the probability that the independence number of this stuff is at least A. Well, um, This is less equal than the probability uh, that there exists an I with size of I equals A, which survives T stages. And uh, and now here we have we can we look at we can look at all the eyes independently. So this is uh, less equal to n choose a 
times the probability that I survives. It's the unit bound. T stages. It's the unit bound, yeah. And yes, this is the union bound from here to here. We just we just look at them uh, as if they were disjoint, the, the events. And now we can plug what we have there. So this is bounded by n choose a e to the minus n t l squared. Okay, and the, the rest of the of the discussion is to understand to understand what we can plug in here to get a to get a nice result. So. Uh, So we said A equals 4N over L because for these I's we, we know something uh, and now this binomial coefficient N over A it can be, can be upper bounded by N to the A A factorial the A factorial can be can be uh, approximated by the Stirling, uh, so we get n e to the a divided by so e to the a goes goes over everything, and now we are generous and we say e is less than three is less than four. We replace it by four. Uh, n for a to the a, and now we plug we plug in the a, so we get the four n and an l, so this is equal to l to the four n over l. And um, and this can be written as, as an exp of 4n log l over l. This is this is this term, and and we also have this term. And uh, and what we what we aim at is that. Uh, that the probability that this is at least a goes to zero. This is what we what we hope for, and uh, so let let me put this here. We want that the probability that alpha of dp is at least as large as a uh, goes, to, goes to zero. And now this means that the exp of uh, 4n log l divided by l minus nt divided by 8 L squared goes to zero and this is this is an exponential we want that this goes to the inner part goes to minus infinity and uh, now the NL can be taken out and we we want that uh, 4n log L minus N T over 8 L goes to minus infinity and uh, and now from from here we 
we can multiply this up, we get a, a 32L log L. Ah, the, the N was gone already. Yeah, so this one, we took N L out. Uh, so we remain with uh, minus T goes to minus infinity. And uh, and what is what is T? So we we have the assumption that we that we should not take T larger than this one. So we put it as equal there. T equals log n log l and um, and then from this uh, the bottom line is that we want to have that log n is really asymptotically bigger than uh, 32L log squared of L. Yeah, and now, now we can, now we are in the position of choosing L. And uh, with L equals log log of N, we are on, this, on the safe side. Yeah, you, you put a log log and then triple logs and this is clearly, this is clearly dominated. Uh, in the in the paper where this is uh, taken from, they say that you can take L equals log n divided by c times log square of log of L. So <coughs> this is this is much. And at the bottom. Uh, sure. This is. Uh, much larger than the double du double log, but uh, but the double log is more handy, I think. Uh, so yeah, what what did we get? Let's uh, let's wrap up. The probability that alpha, the independence number of our graph. Is is at least uh, a and a is four n over l and l is log log n so this is at least four n over log log n this goes to zero so there exist instances random point sets where uh, you don't have such a large independent set and this implies that the chromatic number of such a, such a guy is at least n divided by, by this which is uh, 1 over 4 log, log n or if you plug in this one even larger, but uh, yeah, this is this is what we for n large enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For n, yeah, I. I don't have any idea uh, what what n should be should be chosen, but uh, well, not. It's just it's the last the last step. You have to dominate. You need to dominate the thirty two. It's not yes. very large, but it is yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's it. So we have seen uh, there are two dimensional orders where the cover graph has a reasonably large uh, chromatic number going to infinity uh, not 
we, we know many constructions of triangle free graphs where this goes with log. We know some constructions where it's going even with n to the something like one fourth, one third. Um, but uh, this is a very restricted class and I think a nice result. So what now we change to the next topic and uh, Piotr is taking the seen in this chapter. Uh, so it's about the bipartite analog of Dilworth's theorem. Um, so what are we after here? So we are looking at the pole sets on n elements and we are wondering how large uh, uniform structure we can find. And now it's not about like a click or, a, or, a, or an independent set in a, in a cover graph or whatever, but it's about bipartite uh, uniform structure. So we are after two disjoint sets in the, in the pole set, such that all elements of one set are below all elements of the other set, yeah? Or two disjoint sets such that all elements of one are incomparable with all elements of the other set. Now, we do not impose any, 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 anything on the, on the relation in the elements within both sets, yes? This, uh, this might be important for the full picture. Now, how large thing we can always find, no matter what is the post of given. So, uh, we can start with something here. We can, we can just uh, apply the work. And, uh, and given the work, we can find a, an antichain or a chain of size square root n. And then if we split this anti-chain or chain into two, then we will see 
uh, one of these structures. So this means that uh, this means that m of n is at least square root of n over two. Uh, you can take a uh, floor, right? Yes, uh, but this is not really as far as we can go with it. And the theorem we're about to understand is the is the right asymptotics of this function mn. It turns out that mn is equal asymptotically n over log n. So way above square root n, right? And uh, well, for sure we'll get the somewhat uh, more interesting combinatoriality part, so the, the lower bound for it. So how to actually find this large homogeneous structure. Uh, maybe we will have some quick insights how to, uh, to see that we cannot do better. So some nasty posted on elements, uh, keeping the, this tight. Okay, so, uh, so the statement of the theorem. Um, maybe let's, uh, let's put it here. For every sufficiently large n and every poset p on n elements, uh, there are uh, disjoint subsets A and B uh, such that um, uh, they are large so it's n over log n now the constant is, is 4 here or 1 fourth such that and now the same story. Either for every a and a, b and b, a is less than b and uh, p, or for every a, b, a is incomparable to b in p. Okay. So this is a theorem. We can always find such two disjoint subsets, so large. So uh, let's ju just jump into the proof. Yeah. Uh, this won't be too too hard, but we need to set it up. So uh, we take a pulse of P and elements. And uh, we kind of su uh, suppose that this uh, this thing doesn't exist for some value of m, and then we want to show that this value will be actually large. So uh, so what we say here is that so suppose that uh, for every a b disjoint. such that A and B are greater than M, uh, we have that uh, there exists A and A, B and B, such that A is not less than B in P, and there exists A and A, B and B, such that A and B comparable in B. So I just negated uh, the statement uh, and I, I claim that we have we have the such two subsets uh, and they are of size M. Now uh, the goal is the goal is to show that M must be large. Yes, so m is at least m over 4 log n. Yep. Does it follow that 
first uh, relation should be incomparable yet? Uh, from, from what you wrote, you still could have that all the B's are below all the A's. Yes, yes, so may maybe it's cleaner. Uh, maybe it would be enough because I just suppose that it's true for every. So I, and I will look at some particular in the proof and they will drive me this uh, relation up. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it makes sense to put the incomparable sign there. Um, okay, so this is, this is what we are aiming at. For, and this, this, this will work again for sufficiently uh, large thing. So now, how do we approach it? So we, uh, we fix a linear extension of P. We don't know anything about the pole set. And we will not suppose anything about its linear extension. Um, let's enumerate the elements along the, in, the, in the linear extension, yeah? So, um, well, n elements, linear extension of P. And now, um, now I want to split this linear extension into blocks. So, uh, the number of blocks will be D and D is taken to be N over 2N floor. And uh, we split elements of P into D blocks. Yeah, each block of size um, well, 2N. And now the, the idea is simple. If this is this is what we envision by our linear extension, then we just group elements by in in blocks of two m, yeah. And and we continue this way, yes. Uh, so uh, so a uh, somewhat more formal definition would be that the block C L is just. Uh, these xj's that, uh, that are between L minus 1 multiplicity and L. Yeah. This is good. And now uh, we, uh, we group the blocks together so that we find the middle one. We will call it M. And then we will take the initial ones, we call it L, and the ending ones, we call them H. So, uh, uh, so the definitions are that L is equal to the union of CLs, where L is between 1 and uh, D over 2. M is, is a single guy, D over 2, and H, so the high part, is again the union of CLs, but now L is greater than D over 2, and at most, uh, at most D, right? Right. Yes, so, uh, so, some easy remarks. So first of all, we distinguish here uh, D blocks. Each block is of size 2n. So we might have some remaining elements at the very end. We forget about them. It's, it's at most 2m of them, yeah, here. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, another thing is uh, are the sizes of these sets. That's again easy. So M is a single block, so this is 2M. And, uh, and the others can be estimated uh, well from below. So we take all the elements, we remove elements from M, we remove elements um, 
that we forgot about. And, uh, and now I believe perhaps uh, they are not equally spaced here because we take one floor here and on the other sa side if, if the parity of the number of blocks is, is, is different then we could lose on one side one of the blocks so I believe it's safe to put another 2M here and now it's actually correct and I just, we divide it into, into two because there they are two, two blocks so this, this is roughly or actually exactly n over 2 minus 3M and that's, uh, that's some lower bound that will come into the play at the very end. Uh, anyway, we just grouped the, the elements into three blocks. Uh, now, uh, uh, now we want to look in the middle block and we want to uh, split the elements with respect to kind of size of the downset or upset they, they have. So, um, so maybe, maybe first time uh, some some figure here. So this is the N block, yeah? And here is the, the upper part. Here is the lower part. Yeah? And now here are the two sets in M. So this is this is elements in M such that uh, their down sets are small. Um, now uh, now by a downset, I actually mean the downset not in the poset itself, but the downset projected to the lower blocks only. Yeah, this is a linear extension. We grouped it into a linear extension. It could be like an element here is actually is actually above some elements from this or even from this block here. In a linear extension, they could shuffle a little bit, right? No. Uh, uh, okay, we cannot negate the relation from the poset. But we could have some uh, some uh, some domination here within this block, so we want to forget about it, I believe. So I I want to intersect it with L. Yes, and and then this is small. Then this goes to V. And w is the dual thing. So I take elements from M, but now I I want to have those that have absolute small. So. To intersected with high this is small yes so these are the two sets and now the, the first trick is that actually these two cover m yeah I want to write now that m is actually equal v union w so what would happen if there is an element that is not involved so that would be, have to be an element that is that has a lot of stuff below it and a lot of stuff above it and uh, this actually immediately gives us uh, our structure here. So we have n elements here that are completely below m elements here. Yeah, and this is this m is, is our target m here. And we suppose that it doesn't exist. So with 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 this with this uh, assumption on the way, we don't see an element which is neither in v nor in w. So this way. This way, we actually know that uh, since m, since the size of m is uh, is two m, we know that one of these sets is at least m. So either v is greater than m, or size of w is greater than m. And for the remaining of the proof, we will assume that uh, that this is true. And the proof goes absolutely. Analogously, for the other case, we most likely have to take the dual pole set. And okay, so uh, size of V is at least M, and uh, and now we narrow down. Actually, we take a subset of it to be of size exactly M. So this we may let's keep this color encoding V. So we take V prime as subset of V, and V prime will be of size exactly M. Okay? So we take which is half of the half of the set. But what is important here is actually that this is of size exactly M. Yeah? Now uh, yeah. So now we have these elements here. 
and we'll continue with them. So, what are we going to, heading for now? So, uh, now we need to understand the relation between d and uh, the size m. So that's the theorem. log m seal uh, is greater or equal than d over 2. Uh, there must be something again, yes. Minus 1. And this, this number has a meaning. So this is exactly the number of, of blocks in the lower level. Yeah? The number of blocks here is exactly d over 2 minus 1. That's exactly what we took. What we took. So uh, this is uh, so this number here is actually uh, is actually the same as the size of L divided uh, the number of blocks. So the size of L divided by the size of the block 2m. This is exactly this thing. And now from the from this bound on L. I actually know that I can write here to simplify n minus 6n over 4n. Okay, and on the other side here, this is log m. If we want to get rid of the seal thing, then I could put here plus 1 and put 1 under the, under the logarithm. So this is log 2m. Yeah? So this gives us immediately some inequality of the form, so I look at this and this, and I see that I have 6m plus, um, plus 4m log 2m, and this is greater or equal than m. Yeah? And if we now uh, reverse the dependence and we look at the dependence on m in terms of n, we will see that this is actually uh, exactly what we were hoping for. So this will be little o of 1. And now there is some... Ah! Wait a second. Sorry. So again, m will be greater or equal than 1 plus 1 minus little o of 1. And here is some term log log n over log n. And all this multiplied by n over 4, 4 log n. Yeah, so uh, if we break this, then this means that we make m large. We make m what we want. So, uh, so it, actually, we have this inequality. And this inequality will allow us to iterate a procedure which will break, which will produce our homogeneous structure. So uh, let's get back to this. Mm. What we are doing now is we we are building a, a, a tree on elements of V prime. Yeah. This set here, the yellow set was the prime, and now we are building like a tree. Like, it's not, it's not in our poses, yeah. It's a, um, it's a meta structure on top of it, yeah. And then, uh, so let, let's call this tree T. And now each, um, 
So the leaves of this tree are elements of V' prime. And, uh, and now each, uh, each internal vertex has a corresponding base interval of elements of V prime, yes? So like this one has these two leaves here and so on. And we have a natural notion of layers, right? So this will be layer zero for the leaves, yeah? Layer one, layer two and so on. Now uh, V prime has exactly M elements so uh, we will see something unifying everything in log m, seal of log m steps, yeah? So that's the last, last layer. And now um, what we do is, um, is the following claim. For every i, which is uh, the number of layers, index of a layer, so um, from zero to this seal. For every vertex v of the tree at layer i, we have the following, that the downset of uh, of the base interval. So uh, we need to make a notation for it. Base interval intersected with Li. I will tell you what is Li in a second. The size of it is bounded by m. Okay, so uh, this is a notation for a base interval. I told you, yeah, we have the vertex of a tree you have a corresponding subset of, ele uh, of elements of V prime. That's the leaves in the subtree. So that's one thing. And now uh, this thing Li is just a, you can say a suffix of, a, of, a, of L. So L, L is the stuff here, right? And this is grouped into layers, so there is a what was the notation C? So C1, C2, C3, da, 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 and so on, yeah? Now, if you take CI and CI plus one, then this suffix here, avoiding CI is called LI, okay? And the next, uh, and the next suffix, so those, from here to here, yeah, this would be Li plus 1, avoiding Ci plus 1 already, yes? So what we are claiming here is that whenever, actually, this will be an induction and at the very end we want to state that for the root. So what we will be claiming is that the downset of all of the V prime intersected with, well, with L, but not with all L, but just uh, some, some top blocks in L will be small. Yeah? So the, the whole L thing, you could call that this is L0. Yeah? Everything is L0. Okay. So, uh, Let's uh, let's prove it. So this is an induction on I, and uh, for 
i equals zero. So we are going up in the tree. For i equals zero, this is a statement for a leaf, for a single element of v prime. And we say that the downset of this single element, yeah, intersected with L0 now, so this will be everything, is less than M. And this is the definition, actually, V prime is a subset of V, and V are exactly those elements with small downsets. So, uh, so the base case holds, holds as, um, as um, V prime is a subset of V. Now, now we move, move on with the induction step. And uh, what are we doing here? So assume that is true. For i. And let's, let's look for i plus 1. So, uh, so we take v now at the i plus 1 layer. And uh, let's look at its downset. So the downset of the base interval of v, we should intersect it with li plus 1. But let's, uh, let's have a look first at li. Yeah. So this downset is obviously So look, this could be our V now, and these are the two children of V, W1 and W2. Yeah, they are base intervals sum up to the base interval of the whole V. So the downset of V here is obviously of this size, it's covert. It, the downset itself is the sum of the two downsets. So that size is bounded by the sum of the two sizes. Yeah. So. Uh, so the structure is V, and then in the tree is W1 and W2, the two children, yeah? So, it's the downset of, um, of uh, V of W1 intersected Li plus the downset of V W2 intersected Li. And now, by the induction statement, this is less than n, and this is less than n, so this is less than 2n. Okay, this is something. But uh, what, uh, what do we want? We want the size of this intersected with Li plus 1. So you see, it's... Um, so we are... Uh, Li is the larger thing, Li plus 1 is the smaller thing, so we cross out this now and we just look at this blue box. Yeah? So we know that the downset of our uh, vertex V yeah, is of size at most 2m in this together with the crossed out thing. And we want to have it that it's less than m in the blue thing. So let's suppose the opposite. So suppose that um, that uh, the downset of v of the interval of v intersected with li plus one now, so with the smaller set, is greater than m. Now this and this means we have at least two m elements in total, but less than m elements in the blue. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry. So we have less than two m, ele m elements in total, but m most of them in the blue box. This means that we don't have many in the red box. Yes? So this assumption says that the downset 
So let's try to project the downside here. Yeah. Yeah. So this means that here it will be at most. No. Here it's at least ten. Yeah. Here this is large. Yeah. But then, but in total, it's less than two m. So here it will be small. So uh, this uh, this altogether means that the downset of the interval of V intersected with this one level that is crossed, which is C i plus one. Hopefully. Um, is small. So, somewhat, yeah, I don't know, like this, yeah? Now, now we'll have a contradiction, because the level is of size 2m, and if we cross, if we collect it in the downset less than m, then we have on the incomparable side, uh, we can choose m elements. So we have m elements here. Where is the other m elements? They are here. At least m elements in the downset. Collect them. You have those versus those. What is the relation? Well, linear extension tells you that the only possible relation could be upwards, because that's the blocks in the linear extension. But uh, if this something here would be below something here, then it would be in the downside, but it's not. So, no relation. So, homogeneous large sets of size m, so not what we supposed. This, uh, this, this is a contradiction with the, or the, with the thing we supposed. So, actually, the claim holds. The induction step holds and the claim holds. Okay, so as I told you, all this induction was to actually look what it means for the for the whole B, for the root. So the downset of whole B prime. So let's let's make a final conclusion here. Out of the claim we have that the downset of V prime intersected with um, L. Now we need to take the right L. The log M seal. Yeah. Uh, yes. So please have a look that we already use this assumption on the inequality because we were uh, stepping up in the blocks, yeah, and we did it log M times. So I assume that I have space here, but uh, this is actually what we proved. We do have space. So uh, we prove that this is less than m. And since the, if you look at the inequality, you will see that we actually have even some space. So uh, what is the thing? So say now this is, this box here is L log m. Yeah? And the thing is that the downset of V prime, so of all this box, onto this here is at most m, yeah, at most m in the downset here, yeah. This means what does it mean? Well, we need to take. We need to take a, a block here, included here. The block is of size 2m. At most, m of it is hit in the downset. So we have m elements that we can choose that avoid the downset. Take these m elements and compare them with v prime. One more time. All the relation could be upwards because of the linear extension but it's not in the downset, so there's no relation. And, uh, and this finally says that all this case cannot hold, which means that we actually are in the other case, 
where m is simply large. This closes the proof of the theorem stated here. Uh, yes. So uh, let me just state you uh, the, that it's tight. So um, maybe without a formal statement to not go over time. So it is true that if n is large enough, you can take a posit p, and you even you can fix any fc you want. You should think that it's small, that makes more sense, such that no element in p comparable or 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 every element in p comparable. to at most n to the eps elements and second whenever uh, for every a, b and p that are large and this large means again n over log n now the eps, eps will come here this is a trade-off and there is some constant that I forgot about now uh, whenever you take large subsets, this joint, then you see a comparability. Then uh, there are A and A, B and B, A and B comparable. exists P, or for sufficiently large N, I, I should say, I guess. Uh, this is even stronger, because uh, on one of these, uh, one of these substructures we, we bound even more than N over log N. We don't allow any element to be comparable with more than N to the eps. N to the eps is, is smaller than N over log N. So uh, this is a kind of, uh, how do you call it, uh, skewed? Uh, condition. Uh, yes. So perhaps we will see the details of it in the exercise session. And this, uh, this theorem here is a, is a nice building block uh, for, for one, on one hand for a kind of Turan statements for incomparability graphs mainly. But since uh, incomparability graphs as we have seen have a, have a geometrical interpretation, they are exact, exactly disjointness graphs of lines spanned between two vertical lines, say, then this has impact on, on uh, extremal numbers of, uh, of objects uh, interpreted, family of objects uh, in the plane, or inter interpreted geometrically. Uh, yes, but this we maybe cover in the exercise session, and uh, that's it for today. Thank you.